Hey, family. Welcome to Starseed Mission Support. We're back once again. Can you believe it's Saturday already? How cool that we get together every week. Oh. 2022, the year that keeps on giving, okay? <laughs> Fascinating. Well, welcome to this week's Starseed Mission Support. We're going to roll in with a little sound healing. I think we're going to actually start with a little bit of a prayer ceremony. Probably for the first 15, 20 minutes. We're going to get into a really, really beautiful vibe here together. Do some grid work, seed some peace and divine love into the collective energies. And then after that, we will dive into uh, our topic today, which is about staying in our lane uh, and having a lane. I think the conversation of having a lane is even more pertinent than staying in it because if we had a lane, we'd be in it. And if we didn't have a lane, then we're all over the place. And, you know, we can feel scattered. And any little change outside of our world, it doesn't even have to be a major planetary situation. It could just be our neighbor being mad or our kids acting out, whatever it is. When we are, you know, not grounded and not anchored in our own strong sense of self, any little thing can take us out of our center and so we're going to talk about having a lane and how it has to do with actually our perception of time and our mastery over our energy and our life force so i'm really excited to get into this conversation about time uh, because there's a lot of misconceptions and weird funny things people say about it and much of it is spiritual shenanigans that don't actually make any sense and so I'm excited to have this conversation as a human being that actually really enjoys having time and spending time on the earth, experiencing time slowly, and being as intentional with my time as I possibly can because it's just a mystery all in and of itself. You know, how come some people can, you know, build an entire city and paint the most magnificent paintings? And yet other people spend their entire life, you know, just kind of floating and not really coming into any sort of mastery about over anything. I think it all comes down to the mastery over our time and what we're choosing to do with our time, right? You know, realize that this reality is consistently trying to take us away from that. And so we're excited to dive into that conversation today, but... For now, we're just going to sit in the sound field and welcome everyone to the space. Thank you. 
everybody welcome to starseed mission support i'm gonna turn my mic up a little bit um just because i'm gonna talk a little quieter today i've used my throat a lot this week i was recording a lot of stuff and <clears throat> my throat is a little bit tired so just give me some feedback here let me know you can hear me clearly i've turned my mic up a little bit so i can speak just a little quieter today and I'm just going to wait to see uh, if you can hear me. And we're going to dive into our conversation today. Hmm. Yay. Thank you so much. Okay. So we're going to begin our day today with a little bit of a collective prayer. I invite you to just get really deep into your being, into your body. Maybe you want to just give yourself a hug. Maybe you want to just feel your body. Put your hands on your being and feel how comforting it is just to connect with ourself, connect with our nervous system. Taking some breaths, just landing here. Wherever in your body that's feeling a little bit tired or needing a little extra love, give yourself a big hug. Okay. And uh, for the first 15, 20 minutes of our Starseed mission support today, we're going to just do a little um, prayer ceremony we're going to call in some beautiful divine energies of love peace cosmic harmony and let's just do some grid work right now because it feels like we have the potential to really flood the planet with love this is something that we can do consistently it seems like a good way to spend our time together right now it feels like the grid is really asking for it i remember last week when we had starseed mission support I was really feeling this collective fear of war. And it was so interesting that then things unfolded in this way in the collective this week. Um, it almost feels like if you've ever seen these videos uh, of before an earthquake hits, that animals will begin to you know jostle and run away. And it's almost like life has this premonition and you know, humans are no different. You know, even though we're kind of in this false matrix construct, I think that subconsciously and collectively and psychically, human beings are tuned in to the world just as animals are. And so I really do believe that we were experiencing kind of a premonition, collective, psychic rumble, um, anticipating what was coming. And the collective was already kind of experiencing those energies last week. And so really we were going to just get centered, get anchored. We're going to receive some beautiful frequencies from our angels and our galactics. And let's just go on a little journey together. Um. Take a nice, long, deep breath. Let's start 
to open up our energy field, opening up the space. We're intending, holding a sacred field of energy, and just simply intending that only the highest original vibrations of living source light may be present in this field. And we invite in all of our own highest source connected aspects of self, all aspects of our own being and our ancestors from our earth and galactic lineages who operate and exist in absolute alignment with our unified original divine source, living intelligence. We're inviting in our ascended, pure, divine, elemental helpers. Bring in our highest source connected galactic support teams, our galactic angelic star family. And all the forces of living creation are all of life connecting in. And bringing this beautiful energy, collapsing it right through our heart. Continue to open that space, opening up this portal for cosmic love, cosmic peace, cosmic creation to flood through our being. of love, of how much we truly love each other. Right? The antidote to an anti-life program, soul prison, is reigniting this sensation 
of devotion and reverence and love for life itself. And so when we have this understanding and an integrated feeling of how profound life is, we begin to perceive all beings, all people, all of life through that lens of awe, a miracle. And we begin to perceive each being as an emanation of that miracle of life. And so energetically, just look around in this virtual room here. We have 236 beings that are tapping in live right now. Just sending out a blast of divine love to all the beings that are here. These divine beings of divine love, each with such unique, impeccable beauty. No matter what our beliefs are, no matter what we think, no matter what we know, the truth is that we are an emanation of a miracle of life itself and we bring that vibration of respect and reverence for living creation back into the planet allowing that vibration to nourish all of the corners of this world that has been so hungry of that sense of connection, of this truth, of our inherent perfection and beauty and divinity just existing. <laughs> and we're here bringing in a vibration of cosmic, pure, pristine joy. bursting forth from our heart the joy that only could come from the fullness of experiencing aliveness and the antidote to death and to these viruses of war is to be fully alive to claim your life force to be so filled to the brim with life that joy is bursting forth from you and touching and blessing all that is around and we're pulling these cosmic vibrations of truth of joy of divine love anchoring it deep into the planet no matter where that energy is needed allow it to flow to those places allow it to touch those people and here we're not only calling for peace we're not only praying for peace we are calling forth a planet of vitality a planet so wholly connected and in remembrance of our divine truth that we are thriving in aliveness co-creating in joy in ecstatic bliss living in complete union with the truth of our inner union where all beings are not only happy and not only free and peaceful but all beings are filled with the infinite ecstatic bliss of living life force we realize that no matter what is happening in the world the planet and our societies we have been sick for a long time and the only way that you know sometimes we can heal is if that sickness 
develops into something we can no longer ignore. Right? Sometimes we do this to ourselves as well. We can ignore our imbalances and our habits until we have a disease. And then all of a sudden it smacks us in the face and we can't ignore it anymore. And so we have this great sickness on our planet, that sickness of disconnection, of depression, of having this inherent reverence for life taken from us. So we are bringing this medicine here to this planet and we first awaken this true medicine of connection inside of our being. And we become the source of connection, the source of divine love, the source of healing. And we can become aware of how we can be the source of divine love in every moment of our life. And the war is waging for us to jump on a bandwagon to be an agent of separation. Yet the only truth is that when we can anchor this truth of divine union inside of our being, everything we touch, every word we speak, every hug, every look, every expression of our being becomes the medicine for this world. Fully remember the truth, the essence of our being. Pure love, pure source. Feel this brilliant flower blossom in our heart, becoming this widening chalice for the incoming purifying rain of divine love, allowing for this divine presence to rain down through our body, allowing it to nourish our being, to bring peace and comfort and connection safety and joy and allow the vibration to land all the way down into our sacral and root chakras opening our root releasing all fear allowing the body to relax allowing the pelvic girdle to release there's any collective fears that have made their way into your body, just let it go. 
all energies, vibrations, not of our own soul's essence, not of joy, not of original source love. Let it be cleared from our bodies and fields, particularly down through our root chakra. Let's bring in some relief here for our empath family, yeah? As our beloved Sandra Walter like to say, care, not carry. Just let it all go. Come back to the pure essence of your being. You not only deserve it, not only can you, Okay, now almost like we're gonna flush the toilet here. We're gonna just press the lever and allow that gunk in the root to just flush right out and down. We're gonna clear it out of our body. Woo. We're not gonna put it in the earth today. We're gonna flush it down out into deep space. our root chakra is cleared and feeling relaxed let's go ahead and grow our roots down our true organic roots down deep into the earth creating lighting up the mycelium network of our grounded earth collective consciousness here let's go ahead and start to allow that divine light to reach deep into the collective subconscious Beginning to clear the collective fears and ancestral memories of war. And let's re-imprint, right? I mean, we've gotten this, these imprints in here where life is scary, life is full of fear, life is hard. Let's begin to re-imprint those collective root energies to life is beautiful. Life is full of joy. Life is full of connection and fun things and love and beauty. Ooh, and just expand and push that energy right down into the earth. Ooh. Good work, everybody. innocence of our being coming back online innocence of our perfection I mean children don't really think about if they're good enough or pretty enough they just are and that's our natural state of being is to be aware of ourself and the divine and find this magnificent curious connection where there is reciprocity and so much love inherent in the connection. Ooh, we're swirling something out from the tailbone and the hips here. Good work here, everybody. Okay, now we're just gonna send out these tendrils of light to all the beings on the planet right now who might be feeling afraid. Ooh. Again, we are sending out these energies compassionately. We're caring, but it doesn't mean we're gonna carry. not very much help I mean when you have somebody that is really distressed if you get really distressed and you start crying it doesn't really help the situation right so if we're here to hold this divine neutrality we have to stay in our peak energy So 
sending out these tendrils to all the beings on this planet who might be feeling anxious or afraid or lonely. Let's just gently tap on their field. We're not going to go into their field. We're asking for permission here. We're just going to say, hey, we're here. This energy is here. If you would like to open and flower and recognize and connect in, we're here to support. We're here for you. Ooh, good work, everybody. Welcome back, everybody, to the original state of life that we are meant to exist in on this planet. I have a lot of longing in my heart because as a code keeper, as a frequency keeper, which many of us are, we hold that template inside of our being, right? The original template of the harmonic resonance and the peace, the co-creativity of all of life. And we hold that template and that feeling deep inside of us like a treasure. And so it's almost painful to exist in this world. We might feel out of place. We might feel like we're strange. We might feel like we're just literally in a different world or from a different world and yet we're here and so to all you beautiful frequency code keepers send you a giant hug and just know that you not only have permission to fully be in your vibe you are a great gift to this world you were never meant to fit in you were never meant to have a mundane personality In fact, the more that we can allow ourselves to be the strangest, most unique emanations of our being, the more that we can shine our light and be a presence of our divine love and peace in the world, the more fulfilled we're going to feel because that's our mission. And so even as everyone gets all their knickers up in a knot, you know, we've, we've had practice, right, through the last two years. (laughs) <laughs> when everybody was freaking out about the plague. They're like, why aren't you scared? You're like, because I'm God. <laughs> and I, and God is love. And, and I can be joy. And I can create. And, and in every moment, even if there was the horriblest things that are happening, it doesn't take away from this truth. It doesn't change this truth. 
And so thank you so much for joining us live today. I think we're going to move right into our beautiful conversation today, which is highly relevant. We're talking about life, we're talking about life force, right? We're talking about this original state of being. And when we are talking about how much we love life, I'm going to bring in my favorite Bruce Lee quote. If you love life, and don't waste time because time is what life is made of. And I love this quote. It came in in a very sensitive time for me. Some of you have heard the story, but basically the morning that Kara transitioned uh, the first time, um, you know, it was only a few hours after she just transitioned. I was kind of in this altered state and I got this text message from this motivational message Uh service that I had at the time. And it was this Bruce Lee quote. And it hit me so hard because, you know, Kara, she was only here for nine days, but she was so productive. And through my short, or, you know, it wasn't short, through my year long experience with her from the time she came to visit me all the way time to the time she was born, you know, we were able to accomplish so much. And even now, as I'm pregnant with her again, I'm in the most productive state I could possibly be because the, this this master child, master being, she's really carrying these teachings of original creation. And she's just so excited to get creating on this planet. I mean, I'm excited for her to have her own body, honestly, <laughs> because, um, yeah, it's a little crazy working on my stuff. And then she wants to experience. She wants to create. She wants to do all the stuff. She wants to bring love into the world. She wants to create sound chambers and all these things. And it's a little bit insane, you know, having two creator beings in one body right now. <laughs> My body is like, ah, I'm going to do all these things. <laughs> so it was very profound to receive this message, right? Because this, um, these words, they, they reflected her being so deeply. It was so highly synchronous to hear if you love life, then don't waste time because time is what life is made of. And I've never thought about it like that because in our society and in our, I mean, especially in our uh, new age spiritual community, like some mental thing I hear people say sometimes that drive me nuts is there's no such thing as time. And it's like, yeah, that's true if you're like in some other dimension <laughs> where you're totally connected to source. But if you're somebody that says time doesn't exist, but in your physical body, then chances are you probably don't really get anything done because there is such thing as spiritual airhead syndrome, which is a term that I coined. We got to be able to laugh at ourselves, right? Because I went through this phase myself. I was a hippie and I went to raves. I just, you know, was going to parties because I was like, yeah, I'm going to rebel. Screw the false matrix. I'm not going to get a job. And I, you know, I'm a spiritual being, you know, I got to prove how spiritual I am. Let me dress up in all these crazy ways. Went through all of that and spent three years there. Um, I loved it. It was important. It was important for me to just peel myself off the false matrix and prove to myself that, you know, I, I can be independent of the system or whatever, but you know, we can, have moderation. And when we're just all up in the higher dimensions and disconnected from our human body, which does experience time, right? If you mistreat your body over time, it's going to degenerate. If you work out over time, you're going to get stronger. And so there are certain human things that occur over time that when we disconnect from this idea of time, we're actually doing ourselves a great disservice. And this is something that we get into when we study the lower chakras, specifically the root chakra. The root chakra is the part of us that experiences physical time. And in our society, this is something that is hidden from us, this awareness, because society doesn't want you to realize that you are the pilot, the captain of your own time. If you had absolute sovereignty over how you spend your time, then that's a signifier that you have absolute sovereignty over your own life force, right? And if you have sovereignty over your life force, over how you spend your time, so this is actually, you know, the way that we gain energetic sovereignty, not through some lofty spiritual practice, right? Those help us come into the present moment. Those help us figure out what 
lights us up. But really, life is about exploration, about figuring out what lights us up. And for me, you know, I personally love making music. I love to explore making music. I think I'm really lucky because when I was little, I was training as a professional pianist. And so since I was five years old, I learned what it is to practice hours a day, every single day to get better at something. And this is something that, you know, well, if we grow up and didn't get to experience that, then we can not really understand how profound it is because there's just certain things, you know, that, um, for example, if we want to paint a magnificent painting or want to play a very advanced piece of music, we can't just go from zero to a hundred. We have to exert our focus, right? And so same way that many people say, well, I want to create the new earth. It's very similar to saying, I want to just paint the most magnificent painting. And very few people realize that in order for us to be fully on our mission, there's actually so many things that our human self need to do. And this is why most people have a really hard time getting on to the mission because there's parts of us that haven't fully accepted that we are powerful creator beings and that we actually have a responsibility to actualize that. You know, just believing in it is not enough because then we're just stuck in this ungrounded space where we think things. But until we can pull those things into our body and actualize them and really be able to express our body in alignment with our beliefs, we're not really going to get anywhere. So when this um, conversation, <laughs> this conversation is titled um, Stay in My Lane. So what happened was that I I was awake when the when the mass um, media started propagating information about this war. And it was like three in the morning. By the way, I've been working like I'm so enthralled in the process of creating ISA that I've just been like creating <laughs> and curating the space. The Earth Star Academy is open. You can find the link in the uh, in the description. But I've just been so enthralled with the space. You know, I understand how much beauty and joy and mastery is really going to be brought through this container. And so I've just been so enthralled in creating it. I've been staying up until four in the morning, just working on it. And it's not even like I'm like, oh, I have to work. It's just like so fun and so in alignment with what I've been uh, guided to do for almost a decade that it just feels right for me to be doing it but um so I asked my team right I, I start seeing <laughs> the our news articles and I was like right so if if most of the things that the news you know they really lie about stuff uh you know it's probably not telling the whole truth like and then of course the next thing that happens is like everybody has a different theory about what it is right and so it's like because I barely understand history to begin with. I mean, I'm lucky because my husband is like super into history. I didn't really understand why because I was like, oh, it's a false matrix, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, the way that he explains it to me is that, you know, if you're going to be on earth and you're going to understand earth time, it's really good to understand, you know, what's happened on the planet. And so he's really into studying history, but I don't really understand history at all, nor politics to begin with, right? So because I already have no working understanding of anything about the situation, um, it's like for me to just assume that I'm going to understand or be able to figure out what's going on at all, it's ridiculous, right? And so I was like, okay, it's probably literally impossible for me to figure out exactly what's going on. So I'm going to ask my team because this is how I get information. I was like, I'm going to do an Oracle journey. Let me try to just ask them, what's the truth? What's going on? So I went to bed. I was like, please just send me a dream. I just want to know what's going on. What's the truth about this? <laughs> and, you know, this usually works. I get a lot of information. I have a lot of information about all sorts of stuff from Oracle journeys. This is how I get my information. But instead of giving me a dream about that, I had a dream where I was literally practicing, rehearsing line for line, a new guided meditation for the Earth Star Academy. 
and even the tones, the specific tones of a new sound chamber. <laughs> and so when I woke up, I mean, this is like one of the most vivid dreams I've ever had about rehearsing and doing work that collapses into this world, especially with the sound chamber, because I could literally hear the melody and the vibrations and the tones of the sound sound chamber. And so when I woke up and from that dream, I was like, okay, you guys want me to stay in my lane. I get it. I actually prefer it because, you know, every time that I try to look up videos about what was going on, it's almost like I was bored or like my being, like no part of my being wanted to participate in it at all. And in fact, all my body and my inner children and my mind wanted to do was to build my sound chambers. And so um, I realize how lucky I really am because I have about 500 billion projects on the go. I'm writing five books at the same time. And, you know, I, I don't really have, I'm not really goal oriented. So I'm more of like an inspiration oriented person. And so it's like holographic, right? Like everything is happening. A lot of these books, they're the same uh, architecture, but they're written in two different kind of dimensional languages for different uh, consciousness for different for uh, for people of different consciousness levels, so um, they're they're being written concurrently, and the information is being collapsed concurrently. And then with those books comes you know courses and sound healing, and then you know maybe I want to learn new skills about sound production uh, because one day I want to release you know some music that are less spiritual and more you know inspiring. And then there's things that are on the escrow that are for like 20 years down the line. For example, you know, we're talking about healing a whole planet, right? So that means that we're going to have to build these magnificent pieces of architecture all over the planet, kind of like the pyramids. But I feel like they're going to be just way more explorative and ex uh, experimental and creative because the architecture that I've seen in my visions they're not exactly um, like solid geometry. There's like spirals and spires and shapes that uh, contour different energy lines. Um, and so the architecture that it's coming through is immaculate. It's so incredibly beautiful. And we think about, and that's the stuff, like when we talk about building the new earth, it's like grounded like that, right? It's like we have to build we get to build architecture, we get to create villages, we get to come up with new technologies. And all of those things happened through us. Aliens, and I'll tell you that, you know, of course, aliens have higher dimensional beings, higher dimensional aspects of ourself, have science, have the math, have these technologies. And the way that we access it is by coming into activation in, in ourself, beginning to remember and open up to our higher dimensional selves so we can actually bring down the information. Yeah. And so all of us here in the Starseed community, we got a lot to do and it's all, you know, so much fun. And I just feel like if we were uh, meant to, or if it was important for us to you know, figure things out, then we would be, right? Like some people are journalists. Some people, it's their role. It's their lane to discover and figure out the truth. And then for other people, we have other jobs that we have to do because the thing is that the future uh, depends on what happens now, right? It's like the timeline is a trajectory. So for example, if you are meant to um, build one of these centers where interdimensional contact is going to happen. So that would mean that you need skills in uh, organization. You would need to, you know, be in a vibration in your body where you can easily connect with higher dimensionalities. So you can begin that contact and communication um, internally. You might need to understand finance management. You might need to understand how land gets protected and land ownership and stewardship and trusts, all of that stuff, right? You might need to understand all of that stuff. And so if you just float around and let your attention go everywhere, then maybe you're not going to be able to 
land what you need to in 20 years because you didn't focus your attention on building the skills and the foundation that you need right now. So a lot of people are kind of waiting to start their mission, but trust me, there's more than enough things that you can start with doing right here, right now, right? So part of discovering your lane is really going into your heart and feeling into how you want to participate in life. For me, that moment began when I kind of woke up and I saw how miserable everybody was. I was like, oh my God, everybody's just on the bus or holding their little briefcases and they're so sad and they're eating antidepressants and they are, um, you know, taking sleep aids and they're just not having any fun at all. And I decided that I would devote my life to reaching those people. And so in, in before I could do that, I realized that I needed to establish, you know, my own practice and to heal the depressed parts of myself and to find what life means, right? If I was going to help people come back to life, I was going to have to bring myself back to life because I was severely depressed, suicidal, I had a suicide attempt in high school. So honestly, I think I went through all of those things so that I can understand what it's like to be human and I decided that I was going to devote my life to learning what being alive truly was, what it feels like, how to optimize being alive, all that stuff. So I spent the last 11 years since being really, really sick, healing myself, and I'm still not at the point where I'm connecting with the false matrix because, you know, the next thing that I want is to have legitimacy right? So I got, then I realized that in order for me to have legitimacy, I need to have results. In order for me to have results, I need to have, you know, that's when I started exploring. I was like working backwards, right? If I want to have results, how do I gain results in my sessions? How do I get results? And so when I went into that, I realized that coherence in my light body, it's what gives me results in my healing sessions. And cultivating my subtle sense awareness is what helps me perceive light accurately, right? So then this is when I started to cultivate my skills as a healer to the point where I'm able to just literally see all the layers of somebody's light body because I spent years meditating and training my psychic abilities um, to get really good at what I do. And this is how we can become more valuable in the world is by gaining expertise. How do we gain expertise? By training and practice. Um, I think that there's a lot of trying to bypass that in our spiritual community. And there's a lot of people that are happy to capitalize on that as well. Pay me 10K and I'll teach you how to start a spiritual business where you can be a Reiki healer, right? And it's like, well... I've not had to do any of that. I've not had to charge thousands of dollars. And yet my life is thriving because of the simple thing that I create results in my work. And the results come from nothing fluffy. You know, my guides, they don't tell me what's going on in people because I don't really believe that, you know, as a shamanic healer that, you know, we should get our information from a third party because it really should be our organic system that is perceiving the reality, right? It's kind of like a doctor. The doctor is looking at your body and they're using their own noggin to figure out what's wrong with you. They don't have some, you know, teleprompter on their shoulder that tells them what kind of disease you have. And so in order for me, I realize these are the steps. It's like, okay, I have a direction, right? This is the first thing is you need a vector. What a vector is, is a direction in life, a direction in which you are moving uh, with momentum in any direction. So a vector can be negative or positive or neutral. Neutral would just mean your life stays the same and it feels like nothing is changing and everything's boring and everything's the same. And a negative vector would be if you have habits and daily practices which are destructive to your being and so you steadily decrease your health and vitality and get worse and more sick over time. And a positive vector would be you have consistent things that you do that compound on itself that over time you are moving in a positive direction. 
right? And the sky is the limit with your vector. It really only just depends on how devoted you are. This is the thing with life. A lot of people think it's luck. A lot of people think it's magic. <laughs> and, you know, I think that where you start is really important, right? I was lucky that my parents were, you know, middle class and I didn't, I wasn't born in a war-torn, you know, third world country. But I think we can mostly say that if you're watching this YouTube video, you know, you're lucky. You're one of the most privileged people in the world. And so for you to have this opportunity and making your life great and not taking it, I mean, that should be a crime, I think. <laughs> right? So if you're here having this conversation with me, chances are you know that you're here to assume greatness. You are here to experience the fullest potential. Because look, your highest potential is literally the peak of the universe experiencing an edge of itself. And so you, are, if you are the limit, the edge of creation, right? That's so exciting. As far as you can pull that, it's like a shooting star. And this is something that I think my father's ancestral line really passed down to me because my dad, he was, you know, really poor. And I think my dad is one of the most inspiring people to me. I'm not sure if he's listening to this, but, um, my dad is definitely one of my greatest role models because, you know, he was born into the poorest of poor people and areas in China, which is already a super competitive place. I mean, people that are born into regular families, they have already, you know, a difficult time getting into university and getting their life started, right? So everything is so competitive and difficult in China as it is. And he was born into a, a rural, you know, the poorest of poor areas. And, you know, his mother died when he was young. And then when his mother died, his dad abandoned him. And this man, he just decided that, you know, he was going to change his life. Where nobody else in his town went to high school. He became the first person in his whole village to go to high school. And then he, you know, became the first person in his village to leave that village. <laughs> And then not only did he do that and go to university, he got a really good job, you know, in the city as an electrician. And then he didn't stop there. He moved to a big city of Shanghai. This is when I was maybe five or six years old. And, you know, even though he left, you know, they, my parents left me for about a year to forge out this better life for us. And that was traumatic for me. But like, you know, I'm just in awe that this man then shot into this big city, right? And he still was like, no, I need to create an even better platform for the future of my lineage. And he um, immigrated to Canada, which was a really hard thing, <laughs> which was a really hard thing to do. So then he immigrants to Canada. You know, my parents tell me the story about how they came to Canada with only $20,000 in their pocket. And the three of us were here. I was nine years old. And they, you know, provided this life for me where I didn't know that there was lack. You know, they did such an amazing job. I'm so blessed to have parents like I do because they were peeling chickens at a factory when we were just here in Canada. And then from there, my father um, continued to study. He got his electrical uh, degree here in Canada and his license, and he just began to escalate, right? And then he moved from where the immigrants live to where the kind of wealthy, let's for the lack of a better word, say the white people live. I was the only Asian or colored person in my whole entire school. But, you know, from that vantage point of growth, this is something that is just unheard of at this point. And even then, at that point, he continued to um, cultivate better and better jobs. I mean, even last week, he got a new job. This man is like, uh, he's, you know, in his mid fifties and he's like, yeah, I just got a better job. And I'm like, he just doesn't stop. Right. And my mother, the same, you know, she was like, I'm not going to work for anyone. I'm going to have my own business. And she was a very, she's a very cunning, intelligent, uh, business smart being. So I definitely had a lot of good genes, but my dad's story just, um, inspires me when it hit me. Right. There's another part of the story, too, where I went on this quantum hypnosis journey, and I learned that um, 
yeah, that over that my dad, you know, on a soul level was actually burning off a lot of ancestral karma because my family, you know, has this amazing connection to ancient creation magic. And at a certain point, you know, there were some bad eggs in the lineage that started using that power for for bad or just became the emperor or whatever and just started abusing creation. And so the original dragons took away our family's powers. And, you know, over thousands of years, you know, we had to burn off the karma of having abused creation power. And my father, um, through his lifetime of pure devotion to others, right? Because why did he do all that? He didn't do all that just to support himself. He did all of that so that his family could have a better life. I mean, that's just like you are exerting so much effort in your life and doing the unspeakable for the pure desire of being of service to someone that's outside of oneself, right? And so through his pure devotion to life, he took on that karma clearing so that I could take my family lineage to the next level right? So my dad and I have this really deep soul connection. It wasn't always like that, of course, in high school. I've definitely had my share of uh, teenage tantrums, you know, and all sorts of stuff. But um, I'm very um, happy that I'm able to share that story with you because it just goes to show you what a powerful vector in our life um, can be. So buy him a present. Yeah, I, I do <laughs> just about every opportunity I have. Uh, yeah. And, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I learned a lot about having a positive vector in our life from him because, you know, obviously I'm a continuation of his being and I've continued to, um, move through what is possible, right? It's like in my own life, I've seen this reflection just like him where, you know, I was homeless when I was 16 years old. I lived in my car and I lived in an RV where I was broke for many, you know, for, for many years, I was living that lifestyle. And I, through this pure devotion to creation, we were able to create these new pathways and just having this vector in our life takes us beyond our limits. And, and allows us to access power and strength and diligence and persistence and patience beyond what our, you know, human self can believe is the possible. It's possible. So I want to talk about this positive vector because the source of that vector is your why for being alive. If we don't understand why we're alive, if we don't know what our gift is, if we don't know what we're here to give to the world, we can live our whole life in a lull and we'll waste our whole life away. And part of that is actually us believing that we're inherently unworthy to claim the gift that we inherently are ourselves, to recognize that we are here as a spark of God and every spark of divinity is here to give a very unique gift to the whole. And so the first step of finding your lane is finding your spark. And this can be really simple. It could be as simple as you're here to love. You're here to love creation. So uh, One Love Infinity says, I find Gene Keys useful. So in Gene Keys, my life purpose is teacher of liberation. <laughs> so that definitely... Uh, is an interesting um, architecture. So, yeah, so once you, so the thing is that you have to have this vector, right? You can't, even if you can't um, discover all the parts of your life's work right now, I don't think that it's supposed to be, you're supposed to, right? For example, so the spark of awakening that I had when I realized that people are really depressed, I was like, I want to help people. <laughs> I want to help people feel better. I want to help people just uh, remember what life is supposed to be like. So obviously at that point, I had no idea how to get on to that path, but I just felt <laughs> that desire so deeply 
that then that desire began to rearrange my life. That desire to help people and to bring joy into the world, it began to bring me synchronicities and people and guides. And it's like as long as I take one step towards believing in myself, believing in my path, believing that my life is worth believing in, my life is worth claiming, my life is worth being carved into something magnificent. And this is something that each and every single person has to choose for themselves, right? You have to decide that you are worthy of cultivating yourself into a master of something, which is the whole point of life. I I think, this is just what I think, you know, take it for a grain of salt. If you don't resonate with that, you know, there's other people that think other things and you can think your own thing too. If you, <laughs> I'm just, I, this stuff lights me up. I'm just nerd. Okay. This is what I nerd out about. Thank you for being here and nerding out with me, <laughs> but it's not, it's definitely not the only path out there. Okay. So I believe that I am worthy of sculpting my life into a masterpiece. And that lights me up to, to believe, you know, it's like we think that, and, and the thing is being a multidimensional being, I was in the shower the other day and I just was like laughing because I was like, it ain't even fair. It's not even fair because we have this advanced, advanced DNA coding that literally allows us to learn and engage with reality in this holographic way. And so it's no longer, you know, you spend your whole lifetime to learn one thing. In this one lifetime, you can do so many things. You can make music. You can make films. You can, you know, make architecture. You can write magnificent stories. Whatever it is that you find that spark inside of you that just fills you with positive obsession, I guess, then you can access it. This is, I guess, also the beauty of the, the time we're in where we have technology where you can access literally anything. You can learn pretty much anything. You want to make music? Just go on YouTube and you can learn how to make music. Never in the history of our current civilization has this ever been, you know, present. And so to waste our time right now should literally be a crime. I mean, if you're going to waste your time, I, I mean, I don't know. There's no way to enforce this, but you might as well just like trade lives because there's so many people that wish they had the opportunity to do something with their life. There are people in this world that wish they had the opportunity to have everything that we have in the society, in this life we have to make something of ourselves, to bring beauty into the world, to bring value into the world, to bless people with our life force our joy, our creativity. And so that spark is the first thing, that thing that helps you find your lane, right? Because before a lane is really a vector, is a line, right? It's a direction. And so there's a source of that vector, which is the, the beginning of that spark, that the big bang. And so that big bang begins with collapsing your passion and your life force into this now moment and saying, I deserve to create something magnificent with my life. I owe it to myself. I owe it to my lineage. I owe it to the universe for providing me all the tools. I owe it to humanity who, this is something I say to my students all the time, the world deserves you, <laughs> okay? You came here to bless the world with your uniqueness. We all did. And so the way that we find that crystallization, the path of crystallization. I like this word crystallization. It's it's more, it's like it's like this word self-actualization, but when you say crystallization, it carries with it this understanding of materialization, right? Where this ephemeral, infinite nothingness, and we've started to materialize into these denser realms. And now we are um, expressing in this super diverse, complex physicality. And so when we begin to crystallize, we're literally crystallizing the universe into form. I and mean, when we choose to crystallize the, the universe in a positive way, we are building heaven on earth, right? And so heaven on earth is going to collapse. It's going to 
by collapse, I just mean be manifested. I don't mean actually being destroyed. <laughs> Got to be careful with the words we're using here. Um, the way that we materialize heaven on earth is by each of us igniting our spark of creation and getting on our own personal vector towards our own personal perfection, crystallization of our potential, right? Because heaven on earth is the crystallization of potential on a planetary level. And so it's, you know, impossible to get there unless we each are just fired up and we wake up in the morning. You're like, yeah, I'm the universe crystallizing into form. <laughs> and I'm here to cultivate and grow. And so this is where that joy comes in. In the false matrix, we think that working hard is slaving away. You know, even when I was a kid, I think this is something that took me a while to heal from because you know, when you're training as a professional musician in China as a child, it's really not that fun, right? <laughs> so I had to deprogram myself from that because, you know, in this in this new way of functioning, our motivation is not motivated by fear. We don't do things because, you know, if we don't do it, my mom's going to be mad. Or if I don't do it, I'm going to be broke. Or if I don't do it, I'm not going to be as good as other people. I'm going to lose in that competition and thus, you know, not be able to pay my rent. It's like we want to, we're motivated by love. It's a very strong motivation. The only motivation that can get us to new earth is pure reverence and understanding of how miraculous the universe and life truly is. To have that reverence for life, for creation, feel that power, right? That is the jet engine that is going to ignite and take you from that spark of desire, of knowing that you're worthy to embody the fullness of yourself. And so that then that that energy gets sparked and it begins to move in a direction. And now how are we going to nourish our vector, our movement? Well, we have to feed it with positive self affirmation, building a positive relationship with ourself, creating stability by healing ourselves, by working with our energetics. When our field is clear and the creation energy is flowing, you know, it's easy to run in a direction. If we're constantly getting blocked, obstructed, if people are constantly telling us that we're crazy, then it means that we have those energies inside of ourself, right? So it's easy. then it brings all the power back to us because we can just assess all of the things inside of our being that's actually hindering us from moving in that direction. And slowly we build that momentum through building daily habits, through waking up and remembering and all of these different things. I mean, all of these components are things that we cultivate and educate and support in the Earth Star Academy. We are diving deep into time and creating habits this week. Next week, we're getting into learning how to meditate properly. The week after that, we're starting to work on how to really heal all dimensional layers of ourself, our parts, our inner children, our energy bodies, the layers of our energy bodies, all the way up to 12D and beyond, right? This is the foundation. We're not going to get very far if we keep tripping over ourselves every time we get a little bit of momentum going or the energy is just leaking out or we just, you know, haven't found that train track yet to be on our vector we're still kind of you know it all comes down to if you believe in yourself really i think most people just still haven't fully acknowledged that we are worthy of being a masterpiece we think oh we we have to you know do what other people are doing which is panicking or participate in you know mass hysteria or participate in a bunch of stuff and you know i feel like even if the world is going to end tomorrow, I'm probably going to create all the way until the last minute because it feels good <laughs> because that's what I'm here to do because that's just, you know, what the, the, like God, I mean, I'm again, so fortunate. We're all so fortunate that our role is to create the new, right? How do we create the new one step at a time? We're not going to immediately just go and build a $50 billion piece of architecture, maybe $300 million piece of architecture, right? 
I mean, over the last few years, I've learned so many lessons and there's so many more things that I need to learn. And this is when, you know, there's grounded 3D things that become apparent, things that we need. And this is why this is a very full spectrum adventure that we're on. And uh, yeah, I feel very lucky that, you know, obviously I've been on this vector uh, for a really long time now that I'm stably on my mission and on my path where there's just about 80 billion things that are on my uh, escrow that when things external to me happen, you know, most of the time I really don't even have time. I'm like in, I'm in, like in it. I'm enthralled. <laughs> right? I'm so into what I'm doing that I'm looking around and I'm like, oh yeah, there's something happening over there. Like, let me try to look. No, I can't even because I'm like nerding out. And I think that um, this state of being alive this is like a flowing, right? Is the life force because you came in to this life with a purpose. So really finding the source of your vector and getting onto your vector is directly stepping in alignment, into alignment with your destiny. And so then everything that comes before that, then your purpose right now is to find the source of this vector, of this trajectory, of this train track, of your lane, <laughs> find the part of you that's motivated by pure compassion and pure love and pure creativity and ask that place inside of you, what direction does it want to do? What do you want to create with your life in one year, in five years, in 10 years, in 50 years? What do you want to see and dream big, right? Um, one of the interesting human beings that I've been paying attention lately is Tony Robbins. And one of the things that he says is most people underestimate, no, most people overestimate what they can do in one year, but underestimate what they can do in five years. And I just felt like this was so true. And this is why most people fail our new year resolutions. It's because we don't know how to think in, in the form of a holographic time capsule and realize that we're here for a lifetime, right? We have life force that's flowing through. And I really believe that we're here to live a lot longer than just 100 years. But let's just take the example of 100 years, okay? Let's say you have 100 years to get really good at stuff. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time. I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, it's been uh, two months into 2022, right into this year and i'm thinking about how much like stuff that we've done already all the sound chambers all the classes all the healing that we facilitated it's just immaculate it's amazing and i'm thinking wow like when we think about things compounding over time this is the amazing thing about being a human being is that we can literally project and create over time if we put one brick down every day if we put one brick down every day, in 10 years, we'll have a lot of bricks, <laughs> right? But in the moment, it's just one brick. You're like, oh, it's just one brick. And so we realize that then this is amazing thing about time is that it's compounding. This is why when spiritual people say there's no such thing as time, I know that they're not doing anything that's compounding over time that's actually grounding anything substantial. I mean, look at all the amazing things like the pyramids, you know? Uh, the pyramids probably weren't built um, in one day. Or even the great civilizations. Yeah. And so this stuff fires me up. And years ago, I would have these visions. I would have visions about my life and what I would experience. And I would be overwhelmed because I'd be like, how am I going to do all that stuff? And I was overwhelmed because I wasn't fully in my root chakra and I wasn't tapped into the very next, next step. And I hadn't humbled myself to the recognition that I am here to just take one step at a time and totally have full faith and trust in the universe and the visions that were gifted to me. 
Candace says, tell a pregnant woman there's no such thing as time, <laughs> right? <laughs> So it's amazing because we can build skills. And why is it so fun to build skills? Is like if you are here to help, then you want to actually bring value to people's life. It's so funny because a lot of light workers, and sometimes I see this funny energy where they are like, oh, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. But like they don't like they're actually looking for validation. They're actually wanting something from you. So it's actually like underneath this like pretentious service to other energy. There's actually a service to self energy. It's really sneaky, right? I'm not judging. I'm just pointing something out here. These patterns that we all have, it's important for us to um, just talk about them clearly, right? It's important for us to laugh at ourselves. And so, yeah realizing, recognizing the true motivation of why we do things is so important. Again, this is all part of mastery chain training. I'm so enthralled to be creating this curriculum for the Earth Star Academy that uh, is now running um, fully open. Uh, you can just go to earthstar.academy to check it out. But, um, you know, I'm not really um, advertising or marketing just yet. I'm just making sure that our new technological platform is all set up and that, you know, we don't uh, kind of crash the servers or whatnot. But um, yeah, the idea that we can cultivate skills over time and become more valuable to other people, this is something that fires me up because, uh, you know, we're not entitled to people's money and attention just because we're a star seed or a light worker. It's like we uh, have to have something to offer, right? And this is the thing that's missing from a lot of business schools. By the way, we do have New Earth Entrepreneurship as some classes in our intermediate level. And this is, a, a, this is really cool because these entrepreneurship um, ideas and programs, they really are sourced from original creation alchemy, things that I'm unearthing from my ancestors thanks to the karmic work of my dad. It's just really profound stuff. But when we apply cosmic mechanics and universal creation mechanics in our grounded earthly life, we literally restructure the foundation of the earth, which is the way to creating heaven on earth. I mean, it's really profound, right? And so here's the thing is that in the new age, a lot of people want to focus on, you know, oh, we want to make money or we want to build a business, but there's nothing more important than just the very simple stuff of building skills. Because when you have skills that you've worked hard for in an act of devotion to be of real service, then you don't really need the fluffy stuff. You know, I don't have fancy marketing campaigns. I don't have, you know, a fancy, you know, um, recording studio or whatever. I don't need any of those things because I've cultivated real skills. And this is what we want for our light workers, not just this fluffy sense of entitlement, like, oh, I'm a light worker. I deserve infinite abundance. Yes, we all do. We all are inherently worthy and we all inherently have the potential to carve and sculpt ourselves into a being that holds, um, valuable skills and expertise it's for us to really crystallize. It's not really about other people either. It's about us crystallizing ourselves into the potential that we have set out to become in this world, right? None of us came down here to be fluffy, kind of not effective creator beings. We all carry so many multidimensional aspects and pieces of ourselves that have unique skills and we need to train our human self to be able to hold space and create the foundation for that massive inspiration, creativity, knowledge to actually come through. You have to become a landing pad. How do we do that? Ego training, supporting our human self, healing our human self. That is all of the program of our beginner or foundation level of the Earth Star Academy. The foundation levels of the Earth Star Academy is about supporting the Earth self because the Earth self is our hero. The Earth self is the one that is doing all the stuff. 
in the physical, even if our higher dimensional self carries knowledge. So a lot of times people ask me, Z, how do I remember what my mission is? How do I access my higher dimensional self? I say, work with the earth self, also known as the ego. The ego has a really bad reputation in our community and in our world. But, you know, it's because the spiritual schools are trying to castrate the part of you that carries the most power in this world. And that is your earth self, right? The earth self, when it's held in a space that allows the earth self to cultivate the right attitudes in life, persistence, diligence, patience, groundedness, humility, right? All of these vibrations, these are the things I believe were meant to be taught when we are actually children in school, because they're the things that create the foundation for us to walk through this life in integrity. Unfortunately, none of our inner children were taught those things in school. So now we have to teach them to ourselves, or, you know, just a few decades late um, and restart. Right? Because good things in life are worth our devotion. Ever notice that if you work really hard for something, it just tastes better? Right? If somebody just gives you something, you're kind of like, nah. <laughs> right? It's meaning. We, we build meaning through our relationship with time. We build meaning through the fabric of how we experience life. And so, I mean, I experience life really deeply. I have a really hard time with surface level relationships and friendships. I feel like, you know, it's not worth my time. It's not worth my energy if I can't be experiencing the depth of the universe in every moment. And this might be a cancer thing. <laughs> I don't know if it's an astrolog astrological thing or just an orientation of my soul. But, you know, in my own space, um, I'm getting a lot of <laughs> trolls today. I'm married. <laughs> but thank you. I have a lot of cosmic creation energy flowing through me. <laughs> so we are befriending and learning to heal and train and support and cultivate mastery in our human self because our human self is our art piece that is going to just um, um, become the most incredible uh, thing in the world that humans have ever seen. And we're going to be, um, this is how we're going to be the way showers, right? Because we're here to remind humanity what human truly is these magnificent incredible intelligent genius creator beings that's that's what i feel like my mission is let me not speak for everyone here um i feel like my mission is to embody <laughs> melissa yeah you're so right <laughs> i thought i knocked on wood <laughs> Um, um, yeah, my mission is to embody my fullest creator potential to reignite this template of what human was always meant and created and destined to experience as a cosmic infinite creator being. And by me embodying this template, right, we ignite this template in the human collective. This is kind of like, you know, when there's people that are runners and they break a world record. And then once the world record is broken, then other people are able to do it. So there's kind of a threshold that happens in the human collective. So we're here to break those confines of those thresholds of what is humanly possible through our own template embodiment and ascension. And as we do that, we literally burst these codes out into the collective and um yeah so amy says our mission is to help others through ascension so here's where we realize that we do that by going through and devoting to the ascension process ourself i mean ascension is probably the most profound path that we can possibly be on 
right, is literally the transcendence of uh, physical and 3D limitations and to fully embody, fully materialize the highest qualities of divinity in form. Right, so the part of us that's ascending, right, ascend ascension in itself carries this definition of a vector because we're ascending as a direction. Yeah, and so if we're ascending, which part of us is ascending? It's our human self, is our body that's going through the ascension process because our soul is already in unity with source. Our soul is not the one that's ascending back to source. Our soul has incarnated into this physical world so that it can experience this process of materializing the, ori the original source consciousness in this world. And so that is literally a, a path of genetic transmutation, right? Of devotion to life itself. I mean, the level of devotion that is required for going through our ascension process, it's, you know, it's nothing that is flimsy. I mean, I personally... Uh, you know, started doing some practices that tapped me. It just activated certain parts of my DNA where I started to feel really crazy symptoms where I felt like I was able, I mean, I have had experiences where I've been able to basically manipulate time. And there's just all of these other capacities of our DNA that require for, again, our human self to be mature in order to handle those levels of cosmic powers, right? Because this is how we ran into lots of trouble <laughs> with the world of people taking spiritual teachings and then kind of leading with their humanness. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, we have Hollywood, right? Or the fallen priests. <laughs> so uh, I am deeply honored and in love with every being that is resonant with the ascension path because I deeply feel, understand that this is not a path for the faint of heart. It's not easy, right? My ex experience of losing Kara was the first time was a direct experience of initiation into a path of ascension because Kara is my main teacher in that ascension path. And, you know, that whole experience was an initiation of learning to dematerialize density, beginning to upshift into different dimensionalities. And that, you know, those practices aren't uh, secular. <laughs> They're held in deep spaces of holiness, right? Because we're not really just talking about superpowers or benefits. We're talking about the immaculation of life, of matter. And that's some, that's the coolest stuff. That is definitely the coolest stuff that there exists. And in order for, for that process to be totally protected and, you know, totally held, there's just a lot, a lot of stuff that needs to be handled with a lot of care. And it begins with cultivation and healing of our human self who is here to create that foundation and safety and security and container for all that other stuff to happen. So uh, we get into all of this super deep stuff in a process, in a process, in a step-by-step -step process in my school for star people. They call it a star being training facility. And truly, it's that. We have no fluff. We do training. That's what we do. We train our earth self. We train our uh, psychic powers. We train our subtle sense awareness, our higher sense awareness. And we cultivate self-positivity, motivation, right motivation, our vector in life, so that we can apply and, and build the strong foundation to access higher dimensional teachings like interacting with multidimensionality, preparing for contact. Again, all of those things only come after this amazing foundations process of everything we already mentioned before. So yeah, I'm probably not going to do any major push. I'm just communicating to those people that are ready to hop on. Uh, the school is officially open. Um, I'm just taking it easy with this launch because I want to just make sure the technology is flushed out and the there's a couple of functions on the website that I'm still waiting on. 
here's the crazy thing is that I found this amazing company to host the school and they literally delivered the product of my website at February 21st um, at 1130 p.m. <laughs> and those of you know, I've been saying that we were going to launch on 222 um, for a really long time. And so it was totally this experience of trust in divine timing because they really pulled through. <laughs> they delivered the website at 11.30 p.m. Um, on February 21st. <laughs> so, yes, uh, you can join anytime. It's self-paced. There's no uh, confinements. You can join now. You can join in five months um, whenever you feel called to step into the mystery school. I know that word gets tossed around like handy these days. <laughs> um. Yeah, the thing is that, you know, just because there's names of deities and talk about energy doesn't make it a mystery school. And I feel almost protective over this word because, you know, there are some things that aren't meant to be uh, consumed. There are some things that aren't meant to be capitalized, right? It doesn't mean that there's no exchange because this information, you know, from my ascended master ancestors and from the living masters that, you know, really transmit these frequencies and even Kara, you know, they deserve to be valued. Absolutely. But for the most part, when people throw around this word mystery school, I've seen a bunch of them on the internet and, you know, the core vibration of a mystery school must be devotion and love, pure love for creation itself. Okay, it's that simple. Because what is the mystery? What is a mystery school? It's a school which is supporting us in our connection to the mystery. And what is the mystery? The mystery is universal intelligence, is our universal truth. These things are very sacred, very profound. There's an energy that is held around these teachings. And so, you know, I just see a lot of fluffy stuff out there. It makes me feel a kind of way, but it's okay. Uh, we just do what we do. <laughs> we'll just do what we do over here. And um, the results will speak for themselves uh, in time, right? Um, so Alex is saying um, work on a, so yeah, we are working on a curriculum for children for sure. And we have class um, in the intermediate level about, conceiving after uh, conceiving high dimensional avatar children and how to shamanically birth beings. I mean, these star children, Kara is very particular about how she wants to be brought through. She's been training me to shamanically hold space for her for many months. You know, this is, I'm, according to her, I'm already in the labor stage, which is basically the month or month and a half before the birth actually happens, right? Because you're already starting to open the birth portal and transfer soul energy from the other side into this world. So that's, you know, something that we've started to do already this month. Um, so conceiving and birthing and supporting avatar star seeds to land in this world is going to be one of the classes that's available in the intermediate section. And so... Yeah, we're excited for that. And we're also working on a, um, a homeschool curriculum for children, but it's going to take us some time. You know, that's all it is. Everything takes time. Everything good takes time. I wish there was three of me's, but then I wouldn't be experiencing the present moment in all three of me's, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad there's only one of me, I guess. And so somebody says, I wish I was still young enough to have a baby. You know what's interesting is that I'm um, in all these stories of miraculous birthing, like with Sarah in the story of, I think, Sarah and Abraham, and also um, with Anne, who is Mother Mary, who's Jesus' mother's mother. So Jesus' grandma, Anne. Both those situations in their immaculate birthing, they were post-menopausal. So whatever that means. Is the baby support team coming with them or is the support team here waiting on various dimensions? 
Um, so I say that the main support team that these children have is you and dad and your animals. So for me, you know, I had new kittens come in and one of them is obsessed with my belly. It literally follows me everywhere like it's his job what, because I think it actually is his job. <laughs> like he'll just lie on my belly and purr all day if I let him. So he's definitely part of her team. But the most important person is the mom, is you. You are her main support team. And, you know, a lot of like, you know, because she's coming into the physical reality, huh? you are here in the physical reality. So you are the main shaman that's bringing these beings across uh, dimensions. And this is the power that we're returning to our mothers, right? To the moms on this planet. And the fathers, the awareness, too. This is the process that the fathers are in protection of. So that class is going to be for mom and dad. So there's going to be information for, you know, all people. But, you know, eventually I am, you know, the, the, you know, I'm just waiting for ISA to be complete. And then I have another project that's coming where I, I'm intending to correct the um, medical system around birthing on this planet. I see that Candace is here. Candace and I are still going to work on it. I'm not sure if Samantha is here, but I feel like Samantha is going to be joining us on that process because there are women that have been embodying and in rem deep remembrance of that ancient shamanic template for birthing. And we, this is how we heal this world, right? By going right to the source of where life comes from, healing our connection to birth healing our understanding of birth so that none of us ever have to be born through pain and numbness and confusion and fear ever again. Um, it's all a very complex, multidimensional and shamanic conversation when we start talking about birthing. But uh, I think that concludes our conversation for the day. I hope that it was inspiring and supportive for you. I hope that it inspires you to get on your vector um and uh yeah Leila says the rebirthing process would be amazing so re rebirthing your baby after traumatic birth yeah things like that beautiful so i love you so much this concludes our starseed mission support for this week and uh i hope that we have a beautiful week uh consumed by the light of our own soul and its creative vector in our life. That no part of our living life force is siphoned or stolen or lost along the way. And that uh, we can take full advantage of this amazing life that we have been given. Yeah? If you love life, then don't waste time because time is what life is made of. And send my daddy some love because <laughs> he is incredible. And I love you guys so much. And I will see you next week. Bye.